write the first four non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for e to the x. Use the Maclaurin series for e to the x to write the third degree Taylor polynomial for g to the x is equal to e to the x times f of x about x equals zero. So Maclaurin series, if that looks familiar to you, watch the videos on Khan Academy on Maclaurin series. I'll give a little bit of a primer here. If we're taking the Maclaurin series of f of x, that's going to be equal to f of zero. We could view it as f of zero times x to the zero over zero factorial, if you assume zero factorial is equal to one, and then plus f prime of zero times x to the first over one factorial, plus f prime, prime, the second derivative evaluated at zero, times x squared over two factorial, I think you see the pattern here, plus f prime, 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 the third derivative evaluated at zero of x to the third power over three factorial, I think you see where this is going. And of course, this first one, x to the zero over zero factorial, that's just one, so oftentimes it'll just be written f of zero. And this term, one factorial is just one, so oftentimes we'll just see it written as f prime of zero times x, so on and so forth. So, and actually, let me just write approximately right over there. And so, let's do it for e to the x. So e to the x is approximately equal to Well, it's going to be e to the zero, which is one, plus, you might already know that f, f of x, if f of x is equal to e to the x, then f prime of x is also equal to e to the x. That's one of the magical things about e to the x. The, 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 the slope of the tangent line at any point is, well, equal to the value, is equal to the x value there. And if you take the third derivative, or a second derivative, it's also, you can take as many derivatives as you want, you still get e to the x. That's one of the special things about e. So the first derivative evaluated zero, well that's still e to the zero power times x to the first, so plus x. And then we have the second derivative evaluated at zero, well that's still one, so it's going to be times, or so it's one times x squared over two factorial, so we could say plus x squared over two, plus x squared over two, Two factorial is just two times one. And then plus, once again, the third derivative evaluated at zero. That's just e to the x evaluated at zero, which is e to the zero, which is one. So x to the third over three factorial. So plus x to the third over three factorial. We could write it as three factorial, or that's three times two times one. That's equal to six. And then we keep going. So we just wrote the first four non-zero terms of the Maclaurin series for e to the x. That's one, two, three, four non-zero terms. Now we want to use, so let me just underline that. That's part of what they're asking us to do. Then they say, use the Maclaurin series for e to the x to write the third degree Taylor polynomial for g of x, which is equal to the product of e to the x and f of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write our original f of x. Let's write down the first few terms of it. And then what we could do is think about, well, how can we multiply those two polynomials? And we just have to know enough about the multiplication of those two polynomials to just get us our, 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 our terms that are no higher than third degree. So f of x is approximately equal to, let's see, it's x, I have a bad memory, it is x minus 3 halves x squared, x, x minus 3 halves x squared, and then plus 3x to the third power, plus 3x to the third power, plus 3x to the third power, plus, and or actually you could say minus if you like, because then it's going to be, you're going to have, it's plus, minus, plus, minus, however you want to do it. And that's enough. And why do I feel confident that it's enough? Well, we only want, we're only, we only want to write the third degree Taylor polynomial. So if we multiply these and we involve terms that are higher than third degree, well, we're gonna, we're, that's going to give us the, high, the, the, the terms in our polynomial that are higher than third degree. So let's just think about it. What's going to be the product? So e to the x, e to the x times f of x, that's going to be approximately equal to, well, let's see. We are going to multiply this infinite polynomial times this infinite polynomial. And that might seem intimidating to you at first. But what you could do is you could go for each of these terms, start multiplying it times each of these terms out here. Essentially, you know, when you're multiplying polynomials, you're just repeatedly doing the distributive property. So you take this and distribute it onto that. 
but we should only worry about the terms up to third degree because anything beyond that, well, that's going to be that's going to add up to a higher than third degree term. So x times one is x, x times x squared, or sorry, x times x is x squared, so plus x squared. X times x squared over two is x to the x to the third over two. So I'll just write plus one half x to the third power. And I'm going to stop there, because if I do x times that, that's going to be a fourth degree term. And I don't want to worry about that. We are writing the third degree Taylor polynomial. So x, so that's x, x squared, x to the third over two. So now let's distribute the negative three halves x squared. And I'll use another, another color here just to help explain it a little bit. So if you multiply that times one, that's going to be minus three halves x squared. I'm just going to a second line here so I can line things up and add them nicely. And then this times this is negative three halves x to the third. Negative three halves x to the third. And once again, I'm going to stop there. If I multiply these two, I'm going to get a fourth degree term, and I don't care about the fourth degree terms. And then, and then let's do, let's worry about this guy. And so let's start distributing. So if I multiply it times this one, I'm going to get 3x to the third power, 3x to the third power. And I'm going to stop there, because then if I start multiplying it times that guy, that's going to be a fourth degree term, and then a fifth degree term, and then a sixth degree term, which I don't need to worry about. So these are all of the pieces that are going to make up that third degree polynomial. And so what is that going to be equal to? What is that going to be equal to? And this is a little bit, this was a little bit of, you know, getting your math intuition for multiplying infinite polynomials. Let's see, you're going to have x. And then you're going to have, this is one x squared minus one and a half x squared. So that's going to be negative one half x squared. And let's see, here you have plus one half minus one and a half, which would give you negative two. And then plus three, plus, oh no, sorry, one half minus one and a half, which would be negative one, plus three is positive two, plus two x to the third power. So we could say e to the x times f of x, the third degree ta Taylor polynomial for this, is x minus 1 half x squared plus 2x to the third power. And we are done. So this was a little bit tricky. You had to appreciate how to, but it's not calculus, it's a little bit of just algebra. I'm just appreciating, okay, I only need a third degree. I don't have to distribute this times an infinite number of terms. And Because at first you might say, well, that's, that's super hard. How do I multiply two infinite polynomials? The key is we only worry about the third degree, up to the third degree.